Let's bring in New York Congressman Peter King. Congressman, uh, does Netanyahu have mm -hmm. reason to criticize the current administration? Yes, he really does. And I'm always reluctant to criticize the president of my own country. But on this issue, I believe the Israelis are clearly right and the United States is wrong. Now, what actually went on as far as any collusion or what evidence the Israelis have, we don't know yet. But it's obvious to me that this resolution would not have gone forward without some assistance from the U.S. The U.S. Uh, would have had to have known about it. Uh, I, I don't believe that New Zealand on its own would have moved this forward if they thought the U.S. was going to veto it. So, yes, uh, all the evidence is that uh, there was uh, at least a tacit agreement between the United States and the anti-Israel forces. And to me, this is such a wrong thing to do in the final days of the Obama administration to do this to Israel as a new administration is coming in. It, to, if anything, it looks as if this is payback by President Obama to Prime Minister Netanyahu for the speech he gave in the uh, Congress against the Iran deal. So there's obviously <laughs> the discussion of, of what this means for our relationship with Israel going forward. Donald Trump has tweeted out that it will be much different come January 20th under the Trump administration. But it also has implications for the future of the United Nations, Congressman. Uh, I spoke to Governor Huckabee last night. Uh, he basically just said, said it's irrelevant and, and, and shouldn't even be there anymore. I mean, what do you make of the forum? Is it... Uh, is it still a legitimate forum? Uh, the UN serves a, a certain purposes as far as uh, uh, providing health care and, uh, in some cases, providing uh, uh, peace, uh, peacekeeping forces. But for the most part, as far as resolving major issues, as far as actually stepping up and getting the job done, as far as being a force for world peace, no. It's, if anything, at best, it's a debating society. It's dominated by anti-Western countries. It's uh, basically just a forum, in many cases, for anti-Americanism, and anti-Israel, uh, anti-Semitic, uh, and anti-West. So uh, the UN, again, it's, as far as you know, some of the health services it provides, some of the peacekeeping forces it provides uh, under certain conditions, it's, it, it's okay. But as far as anything big in affecting the world itself, certainly involving the Middle East, no, absolutely not. It serves no purpose. Congressman King, when the U.S. could have, as a permanent member, have vetoed this and essentially pulled the light plug on this whole uh, resolution, can you think of any legitimate excuse for why we abstain instead of vetoing? No, I, I, I can't. In fact, if uh, President Obama was that intent on having a resolution like this go through, because by us not vetoing it, he was allowing it to go through, then at least the United States should have stood up and drafted the resolution itself. Because the way it's worded, and again, I think it's wrong to begin with, but if you are going to have a resolution, I mean, this one actually would prevent Jews from going to the Western Wall. Uh, it's, uh, it, it would give back all of the territory taken uh, uh, after the 1967 war, it would make uh, Israel virtually impossible to defend. So for us to uh, uh, have anything to do, and we did, this could not have passed without the U.S., uh, I, I, all I can think of is that this is President Obama's way of taking a final yeah. shot at Bibi Netanyahu, and this is a relationship which has not worked from day one. I remember in the early days of the Obama administration, <clears throat> people in his administration telling me how they just, uh, again, uh, did not expect to get along with Netanyahu, and they were going to you know, let him know from the start that they were in charge and he wasn't. Certainly an historic moment for America, <clears throat> um, Congressman. And turning to Russia this morning as well, the Obama administration is reportedly going to announce sanctions against Russia for interfering in the 2016 presidential <clears throat> election. More news on this coming in this morning. Congressman, how would this impact the current administration? Uh, well, first of all, I, I do think Russia did interfere in the election. I don't think it affected the outcome. I think, and I don't think they were favoring uh, uh, Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. <clears throat> I think what they wanted to do from the start was to just sow seeds of doubt, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, uh, just put a cloud over, over, over uh, 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 whoever won the election. You got that a little bit intention. of what all of us on this set have this morning, Congressman. <laughs> yeah, we, we got the same thing going on. Don't worry better. about it. Okay. Okay, well, you, better? you kept your breath better. for a second, and, and I want to yeah. get Dagan and, and Jack Brewer sit on set with me this morning uh, as well to jump in here. But, uh, Congressman, if, if Russia hacked the election, which, the, as Lindsey Graham said, the vast majority of senators think that they did, regardless of what their intent was and any, any outcome from the hacking, <clears throat> don't they have to pay? Yes, I think they should. And it's not just the election. I mean, Russia has been hacking into our uh, commercial interests, military, uh, political, governmental. 
And uh, so I think it is important that we uh, do take action against Russia. I, I am one of those who uh, uh, does not in any way trust Putin. I think that uh, uh, Russian uh, aggression, whether it's in the Ukraine, uh, whether it's uh, what they're doing in Aleppo, uh, is just uh, uh, shameful. And uh, we have to send a signal to Russia that this type of aggression will not be tolerated. Uh, I guess where I part company is when people think this somehow uh, changed the results of the last election. I don't think right. it did. Russia started hacking in, as far as I know, uh, long before Donald Trump had any chance of being the nominee. And, and real quick, Congressman, we're about to uh, hear from Secretary of State John Kerry uh, this right. morning on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. What do you expect to hear from him? I honestly don't know. I mean, he's had uh, four years, and Hillary Clinton had four years before that. There's eight years of the Obama administration. They've totally failed when it comes to Israel and, and the Middle East process. So I don't know what John Kerry can possibly add going out the door. I just hope that he doesn't uh, join the pylon and make it even more difficult for Israel to go forward. I don't want him setting the parameters of an agreement between Israel and the Palestinians, which will mean the Palestinians can hang on to that and use that against the Israelis. So uh, I would wish that they would do the right thing here and allow the Trump administration to take over on January 20th rather than just tying the hands of the Israelis as they're going out the door, which is, I'm afraid, what John Kerry might be planning on doing today. Wow. All right. Thank you. Congressman Peter King, uh, good to have you here. Thank Happy you, New Year to you, by the way. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Avoid